Hello, my name is Chad, and today we're going to start a series of tutorials dealing with layer blending modes in Photoshop. Now, layers are really the key to Photoshop, and the blending modes are really the most powerful way to use layers. So, this is going to open up new doors in Photoshop if you don't already use these, and make it possible to do some really advanced retouching and image enhancement that are just not available through using the standard tools on normal layers. So I'm going to open up the layer palette and show you what we're looking at here. This is our background layer. This is a uh, photograph of a piece of art that I photographed for an artist's portfolio. Uh, it has decent saturation and it has good contrast uh, and some fine detail in it so I thought it would be a good example to use for the next few tutorials. It's, it's an interesting art piece uh, as well so we'll We'll uh, be looking at this for a little while. The background layer is locked, so I can't change the blending mode on it. So I'm going to create a new layer. These are your blending modes. The layers we're going to be talking about are overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, and linear light. I know they're also in the same group, but I'm going to ignore pin light and hard mix because I don't really understand them and I can't find much use for them. So we're just going to pretend they don't exist. Uh, if somebody can show me a fantastic example, I would love to learn what they do and how to use them, but so far I haven't figured it out myself. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly take you through what each one of those layers does, and then we're going to learn in subsequent tutorials how to use them. We're going to learn how to sharpen with them, we're going to learn how to dodge and burn with them, and we're going to learn how to adjust contrast in ways that it's just impossible to do with especially the contrast slider, but even with the curves, just impossible contrast uh, adjustments that are made simple with these layer blending modes. So on my new layer, I'm going to take my gradient tool, black and white, and I'm going to drag right across the screen. So on this side we have pure white, on this side we have pure black. Now I'm just going to jump right in. We're going to throw that in overlay mode. When we're in normal mode, we're just looking at the pixels that are in this layer. As soon as we go into a blending mode, we're allowing this layer to modify the things underneath it. And so that's what this is doing. And we're going to see how it modifies, how those layers differ, and then we're going to try to learn how to use those things. So the thing to notice here is that where it's black, it's darkening things, and where it's white, it's lightening things. That's, the, that's this whole genre of, of this whole category of blending modes in a nutshell. When they're dark, they darken. When they're light, they lighten. All of these modes can only darken. All of these modes can only lighten. These are the ones that do both on the same layer, and that makes them really powerful. It also makes them kind of tricky to use at times. Somewhere in here at 50% gray, we're not doing anything at all that's important and it holds true for all of the modes that we're going to look at. These bottom two, it doesn't really hold true for and that's why I think they're kind of weird and haven't figured them out yet. All of the rest of them, 50% gray, not doing anything at all. Okay, so what do we need to notice about the overlay layer that's different from the other ones? It increases saturation whether you're darkening or lightening. Things that were very white to begin with are not being darkened very much even though there's black on top of them. Things that were very dark, like these black balls, even though there's almost white on top of them, they're not being lightened very much. Those are the things to notice. Soft light. It's a very subtle effect. If I turn this on and off, it's pure black and pure white, but it's really not changing the image nearly as dramatically as the other layer. It is darkening where it's dark and lightening where it's light, but it's increasing uh, saturation over here and it's decreasing saturation over here. It's a very natural thing. It, it, it happens with your eye as things get brighter and brighter. We can no longer differentiate between colors quite as well. Uh, so it, it, it's a very natural looking layer and it's very easy to use because it's not super uh, aggressive. Hard light. This is interesting. It does something totally different, doesn't it? As opposed to modifying the pixels underneath it, it's replacing the pixels underneath it. At 50% gray, it's 100% transparent. As it approaches white or black, it becomes more and more opaque and just replaces the pixels underneath with the pixels on top. Now, if I put an image on this layer, 
and allowed it to adjust the layer underneath in hard light, it would be difficult to see exactly how that works. But with this white and black gradient, it's really easy to see what it's doing. And now that we know exactly how that works, it's really easy to leverage that power. It can be very harsh uh, for certain things, but it can be exactly what's called for for certain types of sharpening. Vivid light. It's doing something that's kind of a combination of the two. We still have pure black over here, even though on the black side, even though it was white to begin with. And pure white over here, even where I know there were a couple of these black balls over here. So it's taking those and making them pure white, even though they were black to begin with. But in the middle, it's modifying the pixels as opposed to just replacing them. It's making both sides more saturated, just like the uh, overlay layer. And in the middle, at 50% gray, it's not doing anything at all. Linear light is also very similar, harsher in some ways because it modifies the white pixels more rapidly, like as soon as you start darkening, you darken everything. But it also does a bit of this blending, like an overlay mode in the middle. So once you get into the hard light, vivid light, and linear light, you need to kind of try all three to see which one is going to meet your needs better. The soft light and the overlay have very specific uses that are you know, easy to define and you know that you want to be working in soft light or you know that you want to be working in overlay. But when you're using one of these three, you should probably try all three to see if one of the other ones is going to be better for you. So that is what those layers do. Uh, next time, I'm going to show you one of the basic ways to use them, and that's to use a special filter and sharpen your image with these blending modes. And it's very powerful. It allows us to sharpen in a lot of different ways that we simply couldn't do with the sharpening filters like the Unsharp Mask or the Smart Sharpen or things like that. So tune in next time, and I'll show you how to do that.